Hey friends, welcome back. holidays, candles and hot chocolate. I feel like they all go so well together. So this is just perfect. So I thought I would start off with a little book haul because I recently went to Waterstones. It's the Christmas period. So Waterstones, of course, they had the sales on. They had 50% off of all hardbacks in store absolute dream um but they also had just a general sale of all books anyway so i was i was gonna be there i asked my family if they could get me books or book vouchers for christmas so i was living my best life thank you to my siblings and my parents So this first book was gifted to me for Christmas by my twin sister. It is Without Prejudice by Nicola Williams and it's part of the Black Britain Writing Back Penguin series and I'm super excited to read it. So going over to my Waterstones purchases, this is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Next we have Rosewater by Tade Thompson. Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi. And look at these beautifully sprayed edges, it's Endgame by Mallory Blackman. I also bought Robin Wall Camara's Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and The Teaching of Plants. Next we have Ajababa's Consumed, The Need for Collective Change, Colonialism, Climate Change and Consumerism. A bit of crime fiction, this is Ricardino, this is by Andrea Camilleri, this is the final Montalbano mystery, so I have... Camilleri on my shelf already. I have a lot of the Montalbano series. This is the one that I really want and was missing from my collection. Next we have In Every Mirror, She's Black by Lola Akinmade Akastrom. And finally, Songbirds by Christy Lefteri. I must start by saying that the books that I'm going to show you guys today, the books that are on display on my bookshelf and across here, are not the only books that I own. I have just recently moved back into my family home for a few months and I'm still unpacking. I'm still unpacking. Uh, which means that a lot of my books, and some of my favourites too, which is a shame, are still in some of my suitcases, still downstairs in some of my boxes. And so, yeah, I will not be showing you every single book that I own. However, I have about just slightly over half of the books that I own. So in total, I have slightly just under 400 books. I have just slightly half of that number on display that I'm going to show you guys today. I did literature at school. I then took it forward to do comparative literature at a university where we studied French literature, Spanish, German, Italian literature in English and also in translation and alongside reading you know novels, poetry, plays we also got to study film and visual art so you'll also see film criticism and uh, visual arts uh, criticism and theory. My bookshelf tour today I'm so excited about it because we have writers from around the world different races different ethnicities different cultures different gender we have books from different time periods a lot of historical fiction a lot of contemporary we have a range of different genres everything that you could want <laughs> I'm very proud to say that my shelves are extremely diverse and I thought what better way to celebrate diversity by having chaos in terms of organization. And I thought the only way to have ordered looking but actual chaos was to organize my books by color. 
they are color coordinated, which means that they follow no particular order of organization in terms of category. You're going to get a wild ride. It's very, very chaotic, but visually it looks structured. And I thought this is the best way to kind of even show how I like to read. So let's get into the video. So we're starting here with the top shelf. This shelf was actually separate from my bookcase. I put this bit together and I put it on top of my bookcase because I needed extra storage for some of my black books. But we're starting here. The first two are borrowed books, as you can see. I'm borrowing these two books from the library and I really, really wanted to show you them. So I've put them here on my shelf. Okay, so the first borrowed book is this. It's the second edition of Theories of Race and Racism by, edited by Les Back and John Solomas. It is a very important collection of critical essays by scholars which have helped to shape the study of race and racism. The second book I'm borrowing from the library is Sister Citizen, Shame, Stereotypes and Black Women in America by Melissa V. Harris Perry. Next we have volume one of the Dark Star Trilogy. It is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by the wonderful Marlon James. He's a Caribbean author. And can we appreciate how beautiful this cover is? Next we have The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Okay, so this is one of the most important books of this current time. African Europeans by Olivette Oteli. I absolutely love it. It really looks at how Africans have shaped Europe from slavery to rulers to the histories of Africa in Europe is largely untold. So this is a wonderful book and I definitely recommend that everybody goes and buys this. Okay, so next we have this book by Garcia Morales. It is translated in English, uh, The Self and Bene. Next we have one of my favorite poets of all time, Maya Angelou. This is her complete poetry. This is actually gifted to me from my brother and I absolutely adore this cover. It's beautiful. We're moving on to Guyanese author, David Dabidine. This is a poetry collection called Slave Song. It really centers black men, um, enslaved black men, um, and it is written in an authentic Guyanese Creole. Moving on to this book uh, by Clive Thomas called The Poor and the Powerless, Economic Policy and Change in the Caribbean. Okay, another beautiful cover. This book is set in Brazil and, and also the Gold Coast of West Africa. It's called The Deep Blue Between by Aisha Haruna Atta. Oh, I love this book. It, as being a twin myself, and it obviously it centers twins, um, being a twin myself, it, I found it really interesting, but I think you will really love this book. Okay, so next we have the complete collection of Arsène Lupin, The Gentleman Burglar, The Confessions of Arsène Lupin, The Crystal Stopper, The Eight Strokes of the Clock, The Golden Triangle, The Secret of Sarek, The Teeth of the Tiger, 813, Arsène Lupin versus Herlock Sholmes and The Hollow Needle. French collection set in France and it's crime sort of, not really detective, it's, it's yeah, it's crime mystery. Next we have my favorite Caribbean novel of all time, We're revisiting Marlon James. This is the book of Night Women. It's his first neo-slave narrative. And as you can see, it's annotated like crazy. <laughs> this next book is a collection of essays. It's called European Cinema, edited by Elizabeth Ezra. And it looks at the sort of evolution of European cinema since its creation in 1895. Okay, so if you're really into the intersections of race and geography, environmental racism and stuff like that, Catherine McKittrick's Demonic Ground, Black Women and the Cartographies of Struggle, is a fantastic read. Oh, lovely. We're coming to another classic. This is Franz Kafka, Metamorphosis. Poetry by Grace Nichols. It's called Eyes Along Memoried Woman. We're now in Italy. This is Decameron. It's a translated version. Um, I don't want to say too much about this book because I found it very, very difficult to study. Now we are in France, we're coming to The Lies of Marie de France. 
Um, so Marie de France was actually the earliest known uh, French woman poet. Has a great collection of stories that she has written in verse. Next, we have a Wordsworth classic, Journey to the Centre of the Earth by Jules Verne. And I mean, everybody must have this on their shelf, like whether you're in England or whether you're in America, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Another classic, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. So I actually haven't read this next book. It's by Benedict Spinoza. It's called Ethics. Next, we have Margaret Atwood, The Year of the Flood. And then we have what is for me the most important collection of books, The Holy Bible. <laughs> We're back in the Caribbean with one of my favourites. She's a Bahamian poet, Marion Bethel. I can't even really pronounce the title of this book. It, it's the name of a flower, Bougainvillea, ring play. Um, yeah, it's a wonderful collection of poetry. Okay, so we're moving down where the black spills into the red. So let's go an omnibus by Thomas H. Cook, which means that it is a book which contains two stories. So we have The Red Leaves and The Murmur of Stones. We're moving now to Joseph Conrad. It's a classic, Heart of Darkness. We have Jim Crace being dead. This book is a bit of a, a little bit of a thriller, quite haunting. Next we have William Shakespeare. This is a great classic, one of my favorite of Shakespeare's work. It's a play called King Lear. Now, anybody who truly knows me will know that Italian crime fiction is my favorite genre. Almost Blue by Carlo Lucarelli. This is such a genius book. It's, do you know what it is? It's a cross between crime and detective. It centers a young blind boy and it really, really is a masterpiece. I love it. Next, we have Cutting Edge by Jerome Priceler. Right, so can we appreciate the beauty of the spine? It's from Reader's Digest. It's a collection of short stories. Come to Grief by Dick Francis. If I Only Had Wings by Paul Daneman. Snow Wolf by Glenn Mead. Wedding Night by Gary Devon. Okay, so now if we consider colour coordination, um, this is my second Reader's Digest book collection. It includes Free to Trade by Michael Ridpath, Cloud Shadows by Elizabeth Webster, Acceptable Risk by Robin Cook, and Louis Chabourneau's White Harvest. This next book makes me so happy. It's by Italo Calvino uh, called Invisible Cities. It's a postmodern vision. And Italo Calvino is such a brilliant and and beautiful writer. I really recommend this book. Everybody's screaming about it. Everybody's talking about it. Yes, it's Love in Colour. Mythical tales from around the world retold by Balu Babalola. Oh, first of all, where should we start? Should we start with the cover? Should we start with its content? Should we start with the author? I don't even know. I can say brilliant things about all three. This is a wonderful, really wonderful um, collection of beautiful beautifully told narratives it's a really important contribution because in the mainstream you don't find stories like this so babalola has done a wonderful job here and i definitely think you should go and get love in color if you are into dark decadent thrillers this is the book for you it's called maestra by ls hilton I am obsessed with French plays. Moliere is the greatest of all time when it comes to French plays. So this is a collection of five plays, The Misanthrope, Tartuffe, The School for Wives, The Miser, and The Hypochondriac. It's a translated version introduced by Donald Roy. And from France to Spain, we're looking at Frederico Garcia Lorca's Blood Wedding, um, and it's translated by Ted Hughes. I really love this color. This is such a good red. Okay, so we're moving across now. We're going from red into orange. So remember I said that Italian crime fiction is my favorite genre? Well, this is my favorite author of my favorite genre, Andrea Camilleri. So this is a book collection. This was gifted to me by my friend, Marla. This is a, a collection of the first three novels 
in the Inspector Montalbano series. Um, it contains The Shape of Water, The Terracotta Dog and The Snack Thief. I really recommend that you check out, especially if you are a fan of not even so specific as Italian crime fiction, but just crime fiction in, in general. So the next book is a book I'm borrowing from the library. It's called Change by Design by Tim Brown. Okay, so this next book is, it's an Italian book. Um, it's historical fiction by Lufa Blissett. It's called Q. Personally, I don't have anything good to say about this novel. Actually, I have one good thing to say about this, this book. I really didn't like it. In fact, I dread, like, I dread even talking about it, but I have one good thing to say about this book was that I had to study this book for, um, an essay that I had to write for a module and, oh my gosh, I wrote that essay so last minute. I think I, I only had maybe less than 12 hours to write the full essay, do all the referencing, everything and submit it. So when people say like, I, I, I left it to the day before, like I left it to the 12 hours before the deadline, but it was actually one of the highest grades I ever got at university while I was doing my undergraduate degree. It was a really, really high first. I think it was like 88%, I don't know. But I hated this book and I find that I'm the kind of learner. Number one, I work really well under pressure. So I, when it comes to deadlines, I find that I work really well under pressure. But number two, when I feel strongly about a piece of work, that when I say strongly, I either completely am in love with the book or I completely hate the book, I will produce outstanding work. That's one thing I have found. <laughs> so this next book really helped me while I was studying for my undergrad. It is called How to Write Better Essays by Brian Greetham. Um, it's the third edition and it has so many wonderful and great study skills. I'm trying my best not to summarize every book that I'm drawing out, but this next one is by an African-American author, Dante Stewart. Um, this is, I believe this is his debut book. I could be wrong, but it's called Shouting in the Fire, an American Epistle. This book makes me want to shout. How about that? This book is epic. I am a black Pentecostal believer living in Britain, but this, you know, traditional Pentecostal, traditional even Baptist kind of expression. It looks at it from the lens of race or being black. Love this novel. This is August Town by Key Miller. What a fantastic book. I think so many are going to agree. Yard Yasi is an intelligent writer. This is homegoing. A Spanish masterpiece, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. We're now saying hello to the winner of the Man Booker Prize, Jan Martel. This is Beatrice and Virgil. And there is no better way to finish off this section than with my heavily annotated copy of The Long Song by Andrea Levy, a very gripping and authentic neo-slave narrative. We've moved to the yellow section. I absolutely love the yellow section. It has such wonderful storytelling, such deep and personal narratives. We're starting strong with Reclaiming Our Space by Feminista Jones. Okay, so if you loved the film Me Before You, this is the third book in that series. So you have Me Before You, then you have After You, and then Still Me. I have the other two books somewhere. Um, I think they're stored away, but this is Still Me by Jojo Moyes. I adore this cover. It is The Elephant's Journey by Jose Saramago. Next, we have a really fast paced action thriller. It's called The Doomsday Prophecy by Scott Mariani. But I adore this next book. I am one chapter in. It's Maybe I Don't Belong Here, a memoir of race, identity, breakdown and recovery by David Harewood with a foreword by David Olasoga. I am really loving this book so far. It's deeply personal and moving and you know, it speaks about David Harewood's experience of having psychosis when he was younger and being um, put into a, a recovery centre for, for his mental health. And also it explores being black in Britain and dealing with mental health. So there's so much to explore here in this memoir. 
I love this book for another reason as well. Many of you would know that last year I had the wonderful opportunity of working with David Harewood in an upcoming documentary on blackface and I just remember filming with him and then when we went for a break we had a long walk and he was sharing with me his experience of psychosis so I got to hear his experience firsthand I got to hear about his childhood and he is such a phenomenal and wonderful inspiring guy okay so this next book will give you all the feels every emotion <laughs> reading this book it was funny it was light-hearted some parts were fairly sad and emotional very relatable it is how to love a jamaican by alexia arthurs i'm so happy to share this next book it's a pamphlet by zakia mckenzie she is such a wonderful researcher a wonderful thinker i've had the opportunity of being engaged and encountering with Zakia's work. We are in a collective together. This is her pamphlet, Testimonies on the Histories of Jamaica, Volume 1, and it's just a really great reflection on some of the hist some of the untold histories of Jamaica. Next, we have Zalika Rebenter's Frying Plantain. I've been asked this question before. No, it is not a cookbook. <laughs> This is a really wonderful narrative of, you know, feeling as if you're not wholly Jamaican, you're not wholly Canadian, and trying to find out who you are. It's a great exploration of identity. Next, we have Karen Joy Fowler's We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves. I've realised that I've actually got a lot of Caribbean novels and literature on this on this shelf in the yellow section. That's really one, it's one, why it's one of my favourite sections and with such great storytelling. Um, but yes, this is Ferdinand Dennis, Duffy Conqueror. Next, we're coming to Afghan-American novelist Khaled Hosseini. He's one of my favourite authors ever. When we get to the pink section, you'll find out why. <laughs> And this is A Thousand Splendid Sons. This is about Afghan women under Taliban regime. Next, we have the West Indian novel and its background by Kenneth Ramshand. And finally, Bake Face and Other Guava Stories with an introduction by Rosa Guy by Opal Palma Adisa. We're moving down now from yellow to green. So it's kind of this green into like turquoise colour. We're starting with my very, very used copy of Donald Bogle's Tom's, Coons, Mulattoes, Mammies and Bucks. Okay, so we're now in St. Lucia. Well, I actually wish we were, but this is Derek Walcott, the poetry of Derek Walcott, who's a St. Lucian poet. Um, and it spans his poetry work from 1948 to 2013. So, as I mentioned in the introduction of this video, I'm also very much into art and visual arts, um, as well as film, but this is by Shana Jackson. It's Black Artists Shaping the World, and it is such a beautiful book. Let me show you some of the things inside. <laughs> Okay, next we have Patsy by Nicole Dennis-Benn, followed by Nature Conservation in Britain by Sir Dudley Stamp. Ah, oh, so I am delighted to share this book. This is a proof that was sent to me by the wonderful Alex Wheatle himself. I am still truly in awe and honoured. Um, this book is coming out in a few months, so by the time you're seeing this video, it is December 2021. This is coming out in February 2022. Um, and I, I plan to read this over the next week or two and I'm super super excited and still so honoured and he even signed it for me I'm just look at that look at that to Renee one love Alex Beetle keep up your good work we of course haven't got into the purple section yet but I thought it would be really good to show you all of my proofs and gifted books together so of course I've explained this already um, the next book that I was kindly gifted um, look at this how cute is that very very cute 
Uh, it's called Grown, a celebration of black British girlhood that will empower a generation by Melissa Cummings Quarry and Natalie A. Carter. Thank you so much. Next, and the final gifted book that I received is Carefree Black Girls, a Celebration of Black Women by Zebra Blay, with a foreword by Clara Ampho. Um, I was gifted this book. Thank you so, so, so much um, to the team who sent me this book. Of course, when we get over to the purple section, I will explain to you what these two books are about, give you a little bit of context. But yeah, I thought I would show you all my proofs and gifted books together. Okay, so let's focus back in the green section. Next, we have Paradise and Plantation uh, by Ian Gregory Strachan. This is Beginning Theory, an introduction to literary and cultural theory uh, by Peter Barry. This is the third edition. I adore this. I absolutely adore this text. I think as a literature student or if you're in culture studies too, how do you not have, you have to have Peter Barry on your shelf. Oh, okay. So now we're coming to some of the books that I've bought from the Penguin Modern Classics collection. This one was actually gifted to me. It's Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. Next we have Shinoa Shibe's Africa's Tarnished Name. John Steinbeck's The Vigilante. Albert Camus' Create Dangerously. Anais Nin, The Veiled Woman. Samuel Beckett, The End. Kathy Ackers, New York City in 1979. Saul Bellow, Leaving the Yellow House. And we're revisiting Italo Calvino. This is his The Distance of the Moon. Finally, for this section, we have William Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience. Moving across into the darker greens and transferring slightly into the blues, we're starting with Derek Walcott, Omaros, which is an epic poem. We're back with another Reader's Digest book collection. It has 10LB Penalty by Dick Francis, A Woman's Place by Barbara Delinsky, Flood Tide by Clive Cussler, and The Ghosts of the Eighth Attack by David Beatty. Next, we have an action thriller. This is Robert Ludlum's The Bancroft Strategy. Another thriller slash horror. This is Your Next by Greg Hurwitz. GCSE literature is really coming through right now. This is Daniel Defoe's Robin Crusoe. Okay, so I don't think people shout about Ian McEwan enough. Enduring Love is one of his, in my opinion, one of his best works. Next, we have The Bullseye Principle by Lewis Mills. I have all of the Narnia books. This is number one and this is number seven. The first one is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis and C.S. Lewis's uh, The Last Bottle. I told you guys already, my shelves are chaotic. GCSE literature is coming through again. This is Opening World, short stories from different cultures. Next, we have La Tia Tula. This is a dual language book, Spanish and English. So on the, what is it? Yes, so on the left-hand side, you have Spanish and then you have the English translation on the right-hand side of the book. This is by Miguel de Unamuno um, and it's edited and translated by Stanley Applebaum. Next, we have Built to Last by James Collins and Jerry Porras. And we're moving into the blues and purples. We are beginning with the English dramatist, uh, John Webster. This is The Duchess of Malfi. It is a Jacobian revenge tragedy. Next, we have a collection of poetry called Stargazing by Astra. Next, we have Lindy Miller's Practical Criticism. Again, like Barry's text, this is a really, really great and important text if you're interested in the world of literature and cultural criticism. Next, we have E.T. Hoffman's The Nutcracker, followed by Aristotle's Poetics. Okay, so this is a thriller suspense adventure fiction by... Uh, Charles Bocard. It's called The Temple Mount Code. And of course we have a pocket thesaurus on our shelf. Very, very needed. Next we have John Grisham's The Street Lawyer, followed by a French dictionary because I love learning languages. Another great Shakespeare play. This is Measure for Measure. We're coming to another play. This is a very famous one, Death of a Salesman by uh, American playwright Arthur Miller. I have already mentioned this book. Um, this book was gifted to me. It's called Carefree Black Girls, A Celebration of Black Women by Zebra Blay. Thank you so much to Square Peg Books for gifting me with this wonderful collection. This is a collection of essays. Next, we have Black Slaves in Britain by F.O. Shylon. 
Number five of the Narnia collection by C.S. Lewis. This is The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Now, is this not a yummy book? This is Joanne Harris's Chocolat. We're finishing off this section with Amara Lackhouse's Clash of Civilizations over an elevator in Piazza Vittorio. I really love this cover, isn't it fun? Okay, so we're going from this sort of lilac color into light pink. Again, we're back at a proof. This was a proof that was gifted to me by Bloomsbury. Thank you so much, Bloomsbury. This is Grown, a celebration of black British girlhood that will empower a generation um, by Melissa Cummings Quarry and Natalie A. Carter. I feel like every young black British girl should have this book on their shelf and hold it close. Next, we have Love After Love by Ingrid Pursued. Pursued is a Trinidadian born writer. I haven't read this book, but um, it's got the seal of approval by Marlon James. He's described it as electrifying. This is Pursued's debut novel, and I'm very, very excited to get stuck in and to read this. Next, we have book three of the Narnia collection by C.S. Lewis, The Horse and His Boy. I love Toni Morrison. This is her novel, Beloved or Beloved. Next, we have Sarah Waters, Tipping the Velvet. And it's about that time. So I've expressed to you my favourite Caribbean novel, my favourite genre, which is Italian crime fiction. Now I'm going to show you my favourite book that I have ever read in my whole entire life. This is The Kite Runner by Heled Hosseini. I believe it will stay with you for life. The first time I read it, I were, it was probably well over a decade ago and I have never stopped thinking about this book. It is a story about reconciliation, redemption. It's a story about the, the brutal agonies of growing up in Kabul, set in Kabul, Afghanistan, under Taliban regime. You can tell I've read it so many times. I think I've read it at least six or seven times. My favorite book of all time. Next, we have the new Penguin book of love poetry. I'll probably have to censor this book because if I want it to go up on YouTube. Um, this, this collection is a, is a wonderful collection of great classics and masterful writers. You have everybody in this. You have Wordsworth, you have Robert Browning, you have Elizabeth Browning, you have Armitage, and it's a wonderful collection of all of the best, well, some of the best Western um, love poems of all time. We are in Italy now. We have Umberto Eco's The Name of the Rose, Lee Child, Killing Floor. This is one of my favorite reads that I've read this year, Yajasi's Transcendent Kingdom. What a book, a really wonderful, wonderful, one, wonderful book. Um, she's also the author of Homegoing. I just find her work extremely exquisite, extremely personal and relatable. And this is a fantastic read. Next, we have Terror Rest by Ed Morris. It's sort of a prayerful mediation book, which is centered on Psalms 91. Moving into the white section. So first we have Daylight Come by Diana McCauley followed by Margaret Atwood's Orcs and Crake. And I absolutely love this cover. My recommendation to all people who love hardbacks is to always remove the jacket. Oftentimes you'll just find um, a plain cover um, underneath, but sometimes you'll get wonderful surprises like this. So I love this cover and I love the jacket cover too. Which reminds me the other day, I'm pulling this from my black book section. The other day I took this jacket off and found the most stunning design underneath. Isn't that just beautiful? So, so beautiful. So yeah, I always recommend that when you're buying hardcovers to remove the jacket because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you'll get wonderful surprises. Okay, so back in the white book section, next we have There Ain't No Black in the Union Jack. This is by Paul Gilroy. This is a must read. It's followed by Homecoming, Voices of the Windrush Generation by Colin Grant. So next we have The Innovator's Solution by Clayton Christensen and Michael Rayner. 
And as you guys know, I've said it already, I absolutely love Italian crime fiction. This is Roberto Saviano's Gamora, Italy's Other Mafia. I love books on the mafia. This is a very much based on true events. Um, this was the book actually that made him have to go into hiding, um, him and his family, for exposing um, the Camorra, which is uh, Italy's mafia. Um, so this is a really, is, as it says, the explosive international bestseller and it truly is. Next we have Donna Perfecta by Bernito Perez Galdós. Followed by The Family of Pascual Duarte, a novel by Camilo Jose Sella. Next, we have Five Minds for the Future by Howard Gardner. And then my favourite of all Shakespeare's works, uh, this is Othello. And of course, every literature student has Othello on their shelf. <laughs> Next, we have the, the novel that I'm currently writing on. This is for my final chapter, my final body chapter of my PhD. It is Cane Warriors by Alex Wheatle. It is a neo-slave narrative and it is fantastic. It is considered YA fiction. Um, very, very enjoyable, very quick read, though very, of course, very uh, violent and traumatic, very explicit, but a wonderful neo-slave narrative to get you introduced to slavery in the Caribbean and wow this is a <laughs> this is a childhood book it's uh meet the real world Rachel by Karen McCombie um you can just tell by the this is really giving me um Jacqueline Wilson I don't know what happened to all of my Jacqueline Wilson's books um but this is very much giving me Jacqueline Wilson days Moving across now into the final white section. Okay, so next we have The Red Coffin by Sam Eastland. The Dogs of Paradise by Abel Posse. Two Oxford world classics. The first one is Three Tales by Gustav Flaubert. And the second one is Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Next we have a book I absolutely adore. I'm about a quarter of the way into reading this book. Um, so yeah, I've still got much to read, but I'm loving it so far. It is The Shadow King by Marza Mengiste, and it is so beautiful. The writing is, ugh, the writing is beautiful. Very, very exquisite. Next we have Becoming by Michelle Obama. I have to be honest and say that um, I bought this in a time where it was so overly hyped it was just hyped 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 and um yeah i yeah it's it's not the best memoir that i've ever read um i don't know what i was expecting from it but um it starts off fairly well but yeah now this is a very 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 powerful powerful memoir it is Doreen Lawrence's and still I rise of course taking the title from the inspiration of my favorite poet Maya Angelou um so yeah this is the heartbreaking tale of a mother who lost her son I'm sure we, we've all heard about Stephen Lawrence if you have not I would recommend doing some research and looking into this powerful story but it's about a mother who just never gave up on the fight for justice. Next we have The Heart of Happy Hollow by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, followed by two Theodore Fontaine books. The first one is On Tangled Paths and the second one is No Way Back. The next book is Guess Who by Chris McGeorge, followed by a very short introduction on Tragedy by Adrian Paul, followed by a very short introduction to Tragedy by Adrian Paul, Back in Italy with Leonardo Shasha. This is his To Each His Own. As you can see, I absolutely love this book. And finally, we're in Germany. This is Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood. Okay, so now we're coming to my book stand. So the books on the floor along here, these are my Waterstones purchases. The books that are in these two storage boxes underneath, I'm going to explain what they are. 
but up here is where I store books that I want to reread, um, that I want to reread next. Um, and then I have editions of books that I already own. So I already own some of these books, but I wanted them in these specific editions. These are absolute classics, but I really, 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 really wanted them in this Penguin English Library um, edition. Okay, so we have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, then Animal Farm by George Orwell, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, 1984 by George Orwell, and finally, this beautiful, beautiful copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. From the Penguin Modern Classics collection, The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. And the second one is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. Okay, so these next two books aren't part of a collection or an edition per se, but I wanted to put them together. So this one was already on the shelf. This is Ain't I a Woman by Bell Hooks. And this is All About Love by Bell Hooks. So this wasn't on the shelf. I just dug this out of one of my boxes um, downstairs. Brought it up here to, sh to pair it with this one because I think these two books go so well together or I like to read them together. So Ain't I a Woman by Bell Hooks. This book has been so crucial. Um, this was the, the key text that I used, the key secondary um, source that I used for my entire first chapter of my PhD. So this is really, really critical work. I absolutely love, love, love the critique in this text. All About Love is such a beautiful mediation and reflection on what love means. As you can see, um, it's all tabbed up and I've put it on here because I also want to reread it. Bell Hooks recently passed away and so I've been reflecting on her work and what it has meant for me but also my research. Okay, so now we're coming to my Collins classics. So we have The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi, The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt, The Plays of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde, <laughs> Emma by Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and finally Persuasion by Jane Austen. Next we have Dover Thrift Editions of Free Books. The first one is Selected Poems by Claude McKay. The next one is an anthology of Native American songs and poems. And the final one is Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. Okay, so next we have two miscellaneous Narnia books. Um, so this is number four and number six, The Silver Chair and Prince Caspian. Okay, so while we're here, I thought I would show you what is sitting on my book stand. It is this beautiful, beautiful candle it is this flavor is syrup swell and it smells divine this is from my sister's business my twin sister she is a graphic designer and interior designer and she makes homemade scented candles as well as prints i will leave the link to her shop in the description below okay so we're moving now to my two wordsworth classics the first one is a tale of two cities by charles dickens and another copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Going back to Penguin Classics, these are two plays. The first one is the three Theban plays, Antigone, Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Colonus by Sophocles. So the next one is Iphigenia, Phaedra and Athalia by the playwright Jean Racine. So next we're coming to books I bought from the Penguin Little Black Classics. So this is some, some short stories as well as some poetry. So the first one is How We Weep and Laugh at the Same Thing by Michel du Montaigne. Next we have Tomorrow by Joseph Conrad. Orunoko by Afra Ben. I Hate and I Love by Catullus. The Night is Darkening Round Me by Emily Bronte. Tiger Tiger by William Blake. And finally, Love That Moves, The Sun and Other Stars by Dante. Sitting next to my Little Black Classics, we have a book that has been absolutely, again, just crucial to my research. This is A Billion Black Anthropocenes or None by Catherine Yusoff. So I actually have a really funny story about Bernadine Evaristo. 
Um, but we're going to leave that for another day. So I have two of her books. The first one being Mr. Loverman. And then, of course, Girl, Woman, Other. And then I have two copies of Here Comes the Sun by Nicole dennis Ben. Okay, so now we're coming to books I intend to reread. The first one is Turner by David Dabbydean. This is a selection of poems. An Introduction to Language and Society by Martin Montgomery. Cambridge by Carol Phillips. And I really enjoyed reading this the first time. This is Annie John by Jamaica Kincaid. Next, we have this tiny book. This is one of my favourite short stories. It's by Ian McEwan and it is called My Purple Scented Novel. David Dabbydean. So then I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I've read this already and I just, I couldn't form an opinion on it. I didn't know whether I didn't like it or if I enjoyed it. I'm not sure. And I think that's because I was reading it kind of half-heartedly, not really paying attention. So I'm going to reread it. I absolutely love this. This is by Carl Plaza. Carl Plaza is just an incredible, credible critic. This is Slaves to Sweetness, British and Caribbean Literatures of Sugar. I can't wait to reread this. So I actually finished this fairly recently, but I already want to reread it. This is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. So I never finished this book. This is Clive Cussler's Sahara. Um, yeah, I never finished this book, but I remember enjoying it when I was reading it, but I have no memory of it. So I'm gonna have to reread it from the beginning. So I'm writing on Grace Nichols' poetry for my second chapter of my PhD. And so I intend to reread this. This is about her life and work. And finally, I really, really want to read this. I read this many many years ago um, for one of my modules at university is Undressing Cinema, Clothing and Identity in the Movies by Stella Bruzzi. Bruzzi critically comments on fashion and cinema. Okay so now I'm going to bring you guys down. This is where I like to sit sometimes and read if I don't want to sit on a chair or just read in my bed. I will sit here on the floor because I find that really comfortable but I want to move to these two baskets. Let's bring this one over first. Okay, so in this basket, let me put it like that. In this basket, we have books that have either recently arrived. Yeah, these are books that have recent, well, not this one. This is what I am, as I said before, is a second copy. You've already seen it on my, my main shelf, but I have a second copy. This is the copy that I like to annotate in. Don't moan at me, it's always in pencil, but this is, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm, currently writing on this book okay but the rest are books that have recently arrived that i'm just super 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 excited to show you so this is a little life by hanya yanajahara i've heard so many things about this book as you can tell it is a very large book um, a lot of the people that have spoken to me have said that if you're going to read this get the tissues prepared. It's a very emotional and heavy read. And so a lot of people recommend reading something light or watching something light or getting fresh air after you've finished it or even in between. Next, I want to show you probably my favorite book purchases of 2021 because these covers and the design inside is just absolutely stunning. So these are beautiful, absolutely stunning scripture journals that I actually found out about by watching somebody else's um, bookshelf tour on here on YouTube. So um, I can't remember who's, I watched so many bookshelf tours, I can't remember whose channel I found this on, but these are scripture journals. Um, you can buy all 66 books of the Bible. I have bought my favourite four books being John, Ephesians, Esther and Psalms. This, as you can see, is the Gospel According to John. This one is my absolute favourite cover. This is the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Next, we have Esther, the book of Esther. How dynamic is this cover? And finally, Psalms, because the book of Psalms is so beautifully written. I'm a songwriter, so I very much relate to the style of writing in, in the book of Psalms, but I just find it so uplifting and encouraging, especially if you're starting out or learning how to pray. 
I would recommend reading the book of Psalms. So let me show you guys inside. It has uh, the scripture on the left hand side and then a, a page, I'm not going to show you my notes, but a page to write, to actually journal on the other side. And it is just, it's just wonderful. I love them. I will leave a link in my description as to where I bought these from. So go check out my description to find out more details about these. Okay, so the second basket is the white basket. I am, um, I speak English fluently, I speak German and I speak Jamaican Patwa. I'm a multilingual woman. Um, but yeah, I have, I am subscribed to this um, magazine. It's called Flutte. Um, it's a German magazine and it comes to my house, yeah, I think every month. So yeah, I would really recommend if you are learning a language to, or just honing your skills and learning a language, I would recommend finding a magazine subscription that you can subscribe to that can be delivered to your house every month. Um, I think it's just a really, really fun way um, and a really cool way. Obviously Duolingo is a really great app, um, but I'm not here to promote any apps that aren't paying me. Um, but yeah, subscribing to, to magazines is just a really, really great way to work on your reading skills and language skills. So these are just some of the magazines that I have. Manchmal bist du ein richtiger Arsch. Um, I'm not going to read the rest, but <laughs> there we go. So yeah, my German magazines. Next I have, you know, things like diaries. And then I have um, sketchbooks. These are what's in my baskets. Finally, I wanted to end by showing you guys the tallest books that I own. So they, they stand on my floor. Let me move these out of the way. Okay, so I'm really interested in both history and geography. This is Reader's Digest Touring Guide to Britain. It has maps, it has, you know, cool recommendations of places to visit. And the final one is this huge book by Richard Overy. It's called The Complete History of the World, The Ultimate Work of Historical Reference. It has everything from Latin American and the Caribbean, the age of global civilization, the histories of the Russian Empire, the age of European dominance, which has been an everlasting age. <laughs> and just so much, so much more. Okay, so that's it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I may do an updated one next year showing you all of the books that I didn't get to show you this time. But if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next one.